Welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, we will be showing you how to create the other animation that's found on your main menu screen. And this is for the spaceship. Remember this guy? And it's gonna be cool because we're gonna make our main screen more interesting and keep people entertained long enough to hit the play button to play the game. Yeah! Now we will show you how to create the animation needed for the spaceship found on the main menu screen of our game. To do this, it will require four parts. The first is that we need to create another sprite for our spaceship. There are two sprites that we need. The original sprite that we created that has the pink tractor beam, and then we need one without the pink tractor beam. And so to do this, I used a lasso tool, and I traced around the spaceship excluding the tractor beam. Then I copied it and pasted it into this file and I've rearranged the sprite sheet so everything's well spread out and fairly organized. Once we've saved that and overwritten the original sprite sheet, we can now go to Unity. In Unity, the second part that we need to do is re-slice our sprite sheet. So when we click on our sprite sheet, we'll go to the sprite editor, and I've already gone through and s sliced this sprite sheet. You'll just need to make sure that each sprite has its own box. And with this spaceship, you need to make sure that the boxes for both images are the same width and height. And then you'll need to make sure that they're relatively positioned at the same location on each of these images. Once you've done that, the next part is to create a new animation clip for our spaceship. So to do this, we'll need to select the spaceship we have in our main menu, and then add a component, which is under miscellaneous, and it's animation. Then we'll need to open the animation window, which is under the Windows tab, and animation. Then with our spaceship selected, we'll need to create a new animation clip and we'll just call it the spaceship. Once we've created this clip, we need to add a new property and it's under rect transform and it's anchored position. Now I will create new keyframes at different points in the timeline of our animation to make our spaceship move in a small circle in the upper right hand corner of our menu. A little information about this anchored position. If you expand it, you can see that it has the X and the Y positions for our spaceship. And these correspond with the X and Y position of our rec transform in the inspector. To edit the animation, you will need to click at various times in its timeline and then reposition it in the scene view. You can see now that the boxes for the position of the X and Y coordinates are red. That means that it's currently recording our movements and as we hit play in this button you can now see what I have animated for our spaceship. Now that we've completed this animation clip for our spaceship, there's one last step that we need to do in order to complete the full animation of, of our spaceship. So we will now hit the exit on our animation window. I made the small mistake of saving my animation clip in my sprite folder, but I can uh, move it quickly to our animation folder. No harm done. Now what I need to do is make sure that this animation clip is set to loop, and then I'll click on the spaceship and drag this animation clip into our animation field in the inspector. Now for the last part of its animation, we'll need to create it in the script 
of our main menu. So we will go to our scripts folder and we'll create a new C sharp script and we'll call it main menu. Then we'll double click to open it in mono develop. Once it's opened, there's one step we need to do before we start coding our animation. And that is to specify that we are using the UI system in our Unity engine. So to do that, at the top we will enter using Unity engine dot UI and then end with a semicolon. Now inside our main menu class, we'll need to create a couple variables. All three of these variables will be public so that we can see them in the inspector. And the first one is the image variable, which is part of the UI system. It's the actual rendering of the sprite for our spaceship. The second one is an integer, and the third one is an array of sprites. This is to hold the two different images that we have that we will be swapping in and out. Now we'll need to create a new function. So it'll be a void function, and we'll call it switching sprites. Then we'll have no parameters, and we'll open the body of the function. And inside we'll have an if and an else statement. The if statement will be dependent on which sprite which is the integer variable that we have, is selected. So if it's equal to 0, then we will do what is inside this statement. And first we will set the which sprite equal to 1. Then we will change which sprite we have active by using this line of code here. Now we'll create an else statement, and inside our else statement, we will set the which sprite equal to zero, and then we'll put the same line of code that we have in our if statement. Now all we have to do is call our switch sprite function in our update function. So what this code should do is change the sprite of our spaceship between the two that we have every frame. So we'll now save it and go back to Unity. Now we'll need to create an object that will hold our main menu script. So we'll go game object, create empty, and we'll rename it to controller and we'll drag on our main menu script. Now we'll need to click and drag the spaceship into our spaceship variable and we'll need to change the size of our spaceship sprite array to 2 and go to our sprites folder where we will drag our first spaceship sprite into element 0 and our second spaceship sprite into element 1. Now as we hit play, you will see that our spaceship will have its animation moving in a circle, and it will have its animation where it will switch between its two images really fast. Make sure that you save your project and your scene. So now we only have a couple more features left on the main menu screen to finish up before we can start coding the actual game. So to find out how the gameplay works and all the code that goes with it, make sure that you subscribe so that you can catch our future videos. And we'll catch you next time.